All right, guys. Well, I figured I would revisit a topic that I did a while back, which is power control latching or logic. And uh, this time with another programming mod called TIS3D, which is basically a uh, homage to a game that I rather like called TIS100. So anyway. I haven't really done anything substantial with this mod before, and I wanted to give it a shot for doing some things like this. So here is a setup with it. So we've got, here's our power storage with a comparator on it to read the power level. That power level is being run out into a redstone module on the side of a TIS 3D casing which basically how this works is you have a controller and this is kind of the brains of it and you give this a redstone signal and it executes with its speed based off the power level the strength of it then you have modules that you stick onto it but they can't go onto the controller but the controller connects to casings and then these casings can have various modules and there's a lot of different modules and then these execution modules are the ones that actually run the code but the other modules are for io and data storage and stuff like that so anyway we've just got a casing here with two redstone modules one on this side receiving the signal from the power cell or energy cell and this one here running the output to our power source so we're doing the same type of latching as before in the last video, where we turn it on when it hits a low threshold and turn it off when it hits a high threshold. So basically the code for this looks something like this. And it's basically a kind of an assembly language. So basically we've got our start of the loop here. It reads the redstone value from the right and puts it in the accumulator. The right being the right side of the execution. That being the redstone input. Then it subtracts two. And then it looks to see, is this less than zero? If it is, then it jumps to our on label where it then puts 15 out the left side which is our redstone output, and then it jumps back to the loop and starts over. If it is not less than zero, it subtracts four to check our high threshold. And if this is still greater than zero, so jump greater than zero, it goes to our off label, where it then puts zero out to the left, our redstone output, and then jumps back to the beginning again. If it's not greater than zero, then it just goes ahead and restarts the loop because then it means it's in between the two thresholds. And that's basically how it works. And I've got a invisible screen there running the numbers, but so it can make it go faster and it just basically changes the execution speed. And you can see on the screen here, so there's the value of our accumulator. There's the value of our backup register we're not using right now. And there's our current execution path. So as this goes up, it's about to click off. Oh, and there it just clicked off. It went down to that off statement there. So now it's in between the thresholds. And eventually it'll get down low enough and I'll fast forward a bit until we hit that point. So basically our threshold is oh, two, oh, oh, and it just went on, it just clicked on. So it went down to this le on flag here, or label. So basically our threshold is less than a redstone power of two or greater than a redstone power of six, the way I have the numbers set up. And you can also save some lines of code by get rid of, getting rid of this loop right here. And instead of jumping to the loop, 
we can jump to relative offset. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So jump relative offset negative five, and then jump relative offset negative eight, and jump relative offset 11. And that saves us a line of code. But it functions exactly the same as before. And you could slow this way down too by just giving it a redstone signal of like one or two. Though I'm pretty sure a redstone signal of one pauses execution. Yeah, there you go. So now you can see it running a lot slower. And you have some other flexibility, like you could replace this with a. Uh, structural ducts and relays are really anything that could carry a signal so in this case it's acting as the comparator and the medium and it still functions exactly the same likewise was right here and it does the same thing And then we can have an indicator. Oh yeah. There you go. So there's our on-off light. So yeah. I just uh, thought it was a neat little setup. And I've been really wanting to do something with this mod for a while. So I figured I'd show you guys. So see you guys later.